Hey, what's how happening, you doing, man? Doing fantastic, John. How are you Ooh, doing? I'm doing great. Uh, looks like you got something cool. Oh uh, yeah. What do you got? Well, I got a 1948 Gibson J45. So a 48 J45, a lot of people don't know, these actually came in chipboard cases originally. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, yeah. The, the hard cases were an upgrade <laughs> that few people chose, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, and these weren't cheap guitars. I mean, what's funny about this is we, we all look at this and now these are Holy Grail style guitars and everybody knows there's big value in those. but. This was very very expensive for those people too that originally bought them and they weren't in our dollar not that high but man what do you think this one went for originally well it's funny that you asked that because this guitar actually came with the original hang tag with the price on it really oh yeah i'm ready to see it you ready to see it <laughs> yes i am right, here we go right, we have to be careful with that. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't let it run away all right we got her now should have been a hard case all right cool <laughs> Here it is. I, I, I don't see them this clean very often, but for 1948. That is clean. Like, there's hardly any finish checks even in this thing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Pretty what? crazy. So tell us, what's the story on this guitar? Well, um, it's a really exciting one, um, and I don't know um, if we shall name, but it came into another retailer who does not specialize in vintage guitars. And um, I just saw it online one day, and... and ordered it in from, from, from out of state. So it's got one of those really exciting stories where I really have no idea what the backstory is. Um, <laughs> but that retailer shall go unnamed. <laughs> but when I got it, it in... It might be a big box store of some it sort. It might be a big box store that <laughs> they sell guitars. They're, and they're, they're in the center of the world. They're in the center of the, yeah, yeah, somewhere around there. So um, well, anyway. Um, That's all good. We we didn't cover it. We covered this well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We covered it well. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so everything looks pretty darn clean on here. What has been? What has happened to this guitar in its years of being in existence? So when I got pictures sent to me, I was super excited because I saw how clean it was. I saw that the original case was there, and then I got it in and I went, "Whoa, that's one heck of a belly." And so I started tuning it up, and I started hearing creaks and cracks that I didn't like. And so I popped my mirror in, only to discover that almost every brace in that guitar was loose. And when I say almost, I mean there's 12 braces on the top of the guitar, and there were only three intact. <laughs> so uh, obviously it's a crack-free you know, top and everything like that. So it probably was a good thing, because it expanded and contracted at some point in its life, but it expanded and contracted enough to to uh, just sheer, you know, to basically disassemble, it, disassemble <laughs> itself, um, even to the point to where uh, when we pulled the bridge off, I went, oh, I'm going to see how good the bridge plates on there. And when I touched it once with my ring finger, it fell in my palm. <laughs> was, was this? No, I know there's an era that uh, Gibson had where those glue joints were just the glue kind of fell apart. This is earlier than that, though, right? So this is right in that area. Oh, where is that it right in that so area? The, yeah, the, okay. the actually, uh, yeah, it's funny that you bring it up. So the, the glue that they used on the braces of this guitar and the bridge and the bridge plate uh, are, were actually different than the glue that was on the bridge. The bridge was obviously high glue. You know, it had that kind of ambery tone of the high glue mm -hmm. of that era did, but it was like this stark white hard glue. And I even took like the crumblies that come off the braces and put them in a jar. It didn't even dissolve. Really? Yeah. So somebody called it like formaldehyde glue. Um, I'm sure there's different names for it in different places. But that was a Gibson stuff. era but thing that they a, were doing, right? It was a Gibson era thing and it glue it, it dried so hard that uh, eventually when it was put under tension, it just sheared off, which like I say, I think kind of saved this guitar from some top cracks. I can see um, that. So luckily I was able to remove most of the braces and get them out of the sound hole really clean them up and get good high glue on them and uh, and get it back together. And boy, was I happy with how I it turned out. I bet you were. <laughs> this yeah. is super, super clean. Uh, original bridge still on here? Or? Original bridge is still really? there. Original saddle is still on there. Now this uh, with the, the dots, is that uh, does this have the bolts underneath it? It does, okay. yes. Yeah, and that's uh, something that a lot of people uh, may or may not know, but usually when you see the do, uh, pearl dots that was covering up a uh, screw and bolt system that they had used, because yeah. Bridges came up, and, and the easiest way to try to stop that from happening, at least in Gibson, and a lot of companies' mind was, 
bolt that thing down. Even if the glue gives up, we know it's not going to come uh, apart that way. We're covered, yeah. But <laughs> then we didn't like that quite so much. So <laughs> Adding weight to the bridge area. <laughs> Metal's kind of heavy, you know. So did you leave those in here? Because so some I people did, do remove them. I did leave them there. I'm, I'm kind of the, it's more original. the original. Yeah, enthusiast. I'm with you. As clean as it is. Um, I would do. You know, really, I, the only thing I replaced on that was the bridge pins. You know, uh, the bridge pins were so old and, and shrunken that, <laughs> I, you know, there's... You guys you, don't you, get original bridge pins in this particular you gotta, guitar. Got to change just... the car, tires on the car every <laughs> once in a while, you know. Here, and we'll, we'll lean this up against the front here. Um, but if you had to guess, what was a brand new J45? In 1948, with case. In 48, with case. Or 48, sorry, yeah, 48. I'm gonna take a wild guess because I really don't know. I'm gonna, you know, I want to claim my go. Let's say $575. $575. Was that even close? Well, if this was the price of the right, you busted. Oh man. <laughs> Here's the original hang tags. <laughs> $91.50 right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, I will give you $150 for it. <laughs> well, you, hey, come on, that. that's a pretty good profit. Yeah, what we do you... were, I was thinking about just moving the decimal point over <laughs> twice. <That's... laughs> very, very cool. Uh, not always do you get to see that. And I love it in pencil. Um, the only thing that's, uh, that's missing is some stores at this time period were putting their own stamps and stuff in the insides of these guitars and stickers of that nature. Yeah, uh, yeah. You didn't get that on this didn't particular get that one. one. Didn't you got the strap, the though. It, yeah, it even has a strap. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. <laughs> Absolutely cool. Well, I am so glad you, uh, you found this and were able to get it uh, all up and running. Uh, this is what you do best. So, yeah, check it out. Pete Puncher at uh, Driftwood Music. He can get this stuff happening again, so. Thank you much. Cool J45.